Charge more for web hosting. Charge more. It's like, I'm Lee Blue. I'm the founder of DoubleStack, where I personally mentor some of today's top running web designers. So I talk to a ton of web designers. And one of the things that really stands out to me is like, most people charge way too little for web hosting. And I think part of the problem is people don't want to like feel like they're gouging or overcharging or cheating their client or something like that, which I totally get. So I want to talk a little bit about that. But like, I'm not even talking about like complicated web hosting. I host all of my sites over at SiteGround. I'll put a link in the description so you can see the package that I'm using. I'm using like the, I think it's called the Go Geek package. I've had it for multiple years. So I'm up to paying like $45 per month. I'm hosting like, I don't know, like 20, 25 sites or something like that over there. So the cost per site is significantly less than $10 per month. And I charge $100 per month for web hosting. And I think you should too. In fact, I think if you don't charge at least $100 per month for web hosting, you will probably burn out and hate your job. That's what happened to me. So um, I used to just basically do a pass through, like whatever I was paying for web hosting, I would just charge that for hosting. And then just like maybe mark it up a little, you know, maybe if I was paying $10, I'd charge $20 or something like that. And what I'm noticing that a lot of the web designers that I'm talking to, like almost nobody charges more than $50 for web hosting. But here's why I think it's so important. It's because I do more than the web hosting and you probably do too. Like, so suppose your client calls you up and says, hey, um, could you just change our phone number or could, could you upload this new new picture? Like we, we just hired a new employee. Can you like update our about page with this new photo or whatever? Like just, just little stuff like that that you could probably do in like 15 minutes. But you're like, well, I'll just do it for free. Like I don't want to send a 15 minute invoice and you know, they're my client. Like I'll, I'll just do it for free. And like in the beginning, maybe you can handle that, right? It's, it's like, it's sort of like the camel that has the straws on its back, right? It's like the camel can handle a few straws. Like it can carry a few things, right? But don't get buried by the straws. Like if you've got like 25 or 50 clients or something like that, and they're all calling you a couple of times a week for little updates, I mean, you'll get to the point, and this is totally where I got, I just felt like I was so busy all the time, but I wasn't making any money. I was like, how can I be busy without making any money? And it's because of stuff like this. It's because clients will call in and ask for stuff. And like, I don't want to charge little 15 minute info. It's such a pain in the butt to even just like, how do you even like process a 15 minute invoice and like like the time it takes to make the invoice, send it, figure out if you got paid, reconcile all that with your bank account. It's like, it's not even worth it. And so I just would do all the work for free and that's so unsustainable as you scale out. And so I, I have this policy now where I will not build a website or work with a client unless they agree to at least a $100 per month hosting package but because I, I include the hosting plus up to one hour of support for stuff. And I'm not talking about new projects or like new enhancements. It's just like support, like like we just talked about, like the, uh, the, the, the photo update or something like that. Like something that I can just do in these little 15 minute increments or whatever, but I don't wanna send a 15 minute invoice, but I wanna do it for free. And so $100 per month. So I think there's a couple of other things that, that play into this. Like why would you not do that? And I think sometimes people feel like, well, the client doesn't really ask me to do that much stuff. Like months and months will go by and the client never asked me to do anything. And now I'm just charging an extra $90 per month. And so maybe, maybe hosting costs $10 and I'm, I'm kind of bumping it up to a hundred. So like I'm charging the client an extra $90 per month, but I'm not actually doing anything. And so I feel guilty about that because that seems like, like if, if they would ask me to do something, I would do it. But since they're not asking, I'm not doing it, but they're just paying me anyway. And I'm not rolling the time over to the next month where they could get two hours. I'm just like getting paid for doing nothing. And so my encouragement is don't get paid to do nothing. Like do something, do, do something. Like if the client asks you to do something, then that takes care of that hour. But if they don't ask, there's so many things you could be doing, right? There's so many things that you could be doing. For example, why not take a look at the web stats and figure out what, is there anything that you could do to improve time on site? Like for example, you, you look at, I use Clicky by the way for my websites stats instead of, uh, or sometimes in addition to Google Analytics, but Clicky, I'll put a link in the description for that too. Clicky is just so clean and easy to use. It doesn't look really cool. It looks outdated, but the information is just so rich and easy to use. You can even share like, like a link to Clicky to your client that can actually understand what they're looking at. But anyway, so I'll look at Clicky and I can immediately see, like, like maybe I'll look at the homepage report and I'll immediately see like, what's the, like, what's the bounce rate? Like how many people just bounce off the site? Or like, what's the conversion rate on my email opt-in? Like, is it low or, or like my call to action? Like what's the conversion rate on, on, on all of that? 
And I'll look at it and I'll say, well, if, if, the, if the time on site is just really, really low and my conversion rate for my email opt-in or call to action is also really low, I'm probably not going to change the call to action. I'm probably going to change something about the top of the page. They're probably not even getting down the page far enough to see what the call to action is because the headline is probably not speaking to them. So I'm going to immediately think, well, if I want to improve the performance of this site and, and the, the results for the client, I probably should change the headline. It looks like the headline's not performing at the level that we want. So I'll try that out. If it looks like there, there is significant time on the site, but people just aren't doing the email opt-in or, or taking the call to action, like maybe the call to action is call now to get started. Well, maybe they're not ready to call now to get started. Maybe they're still thinking about it a little bit. And so, and this is especially true if it's something expensive, like, like you're working with a client that sells like kitchen remodeling or roofing or selling swimming pools or solar panels or, or something where you just don't just willy nilly buy like a $10,000 or $20,000, $50,000 thing. You wanna think about it before you get in. Or maybe it has to do with your health. Like even if you're gonna go see a chiropractor, you probably want to think about what am I even getting into and do my symptoms match up with what I think might actually help me if I was to go to the chiropractor. And so I want to learn a little. I'm not ready to call and get started yet. And so if I'm noticing that people are staying on the site, but they're not taking the call to action, I might say we need a less intimate call to action of some sort. So like if it's an educational thing, instead of just like having the main thrust be, hey, call to get started, why can't I add an email opt-in so I can nurture and qualify the leads and then like nurture those leads over the next week or so with, with like an email drip campaign. And those emails can push people to a call, right? So all I'm saying is if the client doesn't call in with some kind of like on-demand request for that, that up to an hour of support, look at the web stats and see if you could figure out, do I need to change the headline? Do I need to do something with the call to action? Or maybe there's something seasonal on the website that needs to be updated. Like if you're working with anybody that does anything outside, like pest control or pool maintenance or lawn care or anything like that, or even fitness. It's like, ever, like we're getting ready to go into the new year. There's gonna be so many fitness ads about, hey, lose all the weight that you gained during the holidays. You know, get ready to start the new year healthy, the, the, the new year, new you, stuff like that. And so you've got like all that stuff going on. Well, then by the time you get into like the spring, well, that doesn't apply anymore. It's like now it's like get your beach body ready. You know, the summer's coming, bathing suits are coming out. Like, and so there's seasonal content. Like you need to make these changes. And so I'm not even saying do all the changes. I'm just saying like look to see if there's something that could be done and then mention it to the client. Like if they're only paying, like I strongly recommend that they pay you more than $100 per month. I would say that like our entry level package is $375 per month because I wanna do the $100 per month that we're talking about right now, but I also wanna have some money in there so I can actually implement some of the stuff that I'm discovering. But even if you're not, like even if you're not doing that stuff, if you're at least charging $100 per month for the hosting, the client doesn't call in and ask for anything, you can discover things that you could actually do and then present that to the client and say, I think we should change the seasonal content from the new year, new you to, hey, get your beach body ready. Why don't, would, would you be okay if I started working on some of that? And then price it out as a separate small project, right? So even if you're not on any sort of like monthly maintenance plan or, or retainer or whatever, at least you can do these like mini project upgrades. So all that is to say, we'll talk about the, the upgrades and everything later, but the main thing that I'm trying to suggest right now is charge at least $100 per month for hosting. And I think there's three major points behind it. One of them we've already talked about, which is I think a lot of people don't do this because they feel like they're just billing the client for stuff and not doing any work. And then you feel like, you're kind of cheating the client out of the money. And all I'm saying is do some stuff. Like actually, thing number one is actually do some stuff. And there's infinity numbers of things that you could be doing for any particular client. And the only reason that I sort of throttle back my time is basically the client's budget, right? And so if I've got an extra 45 minutes that I can spend because there's because they're spending 90 extra dollars per month with me. And by the way, you should be charging at least $100 per hour. Like if you think about your your hourly like your hourly rate that you want to be making. Like I don't recommend that you bill by the hour, but you should be at least thinking I need to be making at least 100 bucks an hour, maybe 150. And so that $90 is less than an hour of your time, like 45 minutes. So like take the extra 45 minutes and like, you know, make sure your plugins are updated, any, any technical updates you need to check out. Every once in a while, just submit the contact form as a test or the call to action stuff as a test to make sure all the technical stuff is working. And then like do some of the stuff we just talked about with like maybe uh, conversion rate optimization or something like that. <clears throat> so all I'm saying is thing number one 
is don't just do nothing, like do something. And then that, that way you're, you feel right about actually charging the client for the $100. But then the second thing is, even if you're doing something that feels really easy to you, one of the things that happens like when you get good at stuff, that you can do, you can do hard things easily and quickly. And I think that's something that's worth value. And so one of the things that I think is just such a strong encouragement that I wanted to share with you is that when you get good at something and then you do the thing that you're good at for somebody, people feel like they're getting a lot more from you than it feels like you're giving to them. And there's an imbalance there. And if you, if you only decide to bill based on how hard something feels to you, then you're totally undervaluing your stuff. And then you might not even do the stuff, in which case you're, you're robbing the client of that blessing. So like, just keep in mind that when you're good at stuff, people feel like they're getting a lot more than it seems like you're giving. And that's just a really helpful mindset shift. But then the third and final thing is, if you're not doing this, like if, if you just don't make any money off of hosting, you don't have that extra $90 in there to account for all of this stuff, then you get crushed by the straws. You know, like all these little straws come in from all your clients asking you to do little stuff here and there. And it's just, you just get crushed by the straws. So my encouragement is don't be crushed by the straws. Like boost up everything. Like, like start making $100 per month on your hosting. And then on top of that, there's other things that you could be doing as well. So in fact, check out this next video because I think traditional web design is basically over. And um, I think I, I kind of go into the details in this next video over here. So check that out if you're kind of wondering like what other things could you be doing other than just traditional web design or whatever. So check that out. But the main thing for today is charge more for the hosting. <laughs> I'll see you soon.